Good afternoon, this is Sean Golding with Golding & Golding, here to discuss the basics of two very common crimes and how they can result in a criminal tax violation. And the two crimes are money laundering and tax evasion. They're common, uh, you hear about them all the time in the movies or just in, in general. They're fodder for books and all that kind of good stuff. But they're financial crimes and so they're sexier than other crimes and so that's why you hear about it. Let's go through it. Money laundering, right? The idea of money laundering is that you are taking something that is illegal and you're trying to clean it so that it becomes legal money. Here's a common example. Uh, someone might have uh, earned significant illegal proceeds gambling, right? They have a million dollars. They can't just go to the bank and deposit it. There's gonna be questions if you just walk into the bank with a million dollars and then you've got issues with structuring and smurfing if you try breaking up those deposits, uh, currency transaction reports, suspicious activity reports, CTRs and SARs and things you want to avoid. So instead of going that route, uh, a person might say, okay, I see this restaurant's looking for an investor. I'm going to take my million dollars of ill-gotten gains. That's what they call it. I'm going to invest it into this restaurant for a 25% stake. And then, no pun intended. Right? <laughs> and then uh, every couple months, they get their 25% share of dividends or proceeds. And now they think they have clean money. Technically, from an IRS government perspective, it's not clean, but it's very hard to detect, right? If the government can't find that first money that was put in there, the ill-gotten gains, and it just looks like someone invested some money, unless that restaurant's under audit or something like that, then normally they can they can skate by. Tax evasion is one of the more serious tax, types of tax crimes, excuse me, requires an affirmative act, willfulness, government has to prove beyond a reasonable doubt. Someone has a tax return, right? And they file that return, they have a certain amount of income, the legal income, let's say maybe they received that income in cash and then they're filing their tax return and they know they received the income. They intentionally don't include that income as part of their tax return. And now they affirmatively, they, the affirmative act, which is required most of the time, which is the filing of the false return. They knew they were supposed to include that income in there. They didn't. And so now they're guilty of tax evasion. Also, evading payment can be considered a form of evasion, let's say you're at a debtor's exam, you're under oath, you give a bunch of hoopla about where the money is, you don't have any money, it's gone, but really it's not, it's hidden somewhere. That's evading tax, it's intentional, and that could result in an evasion charge as well. But why don't we go through an example of how money laundering can lead to tax evasion. Kind of expanding on the example we just used, just let's say Mike, right? Mike has a million dollars of ill-gotten gains. And Mike goes, okay, this restaurant's looking for an investor. So Mike invests his million dollars into this restaurant and every few months, and for 25% stake, and every uh, few months he receives proceeds, right? And he makes $100,000 this year, let's say. It's a good investment. So he goes ahead and he files his tax return for the current year. And he includes what he thinks is the clean money on the tax return then he submits it. Affirmative act. This can be considered tax evasion. Why? Well, because in the same year, Michael had received the ill-gotten gains of the uh, illegal gambling. In fact, ill-gotten gains are still required to be disclosed on a tax return as, as ridiculous as it seems, right? It's basically walking in there and asking to, get, to be arrested. But uh, something to keep in mind, if you have ill-gotten gains, it's taxable. So the mere fact that you try to clean that money, then you have the additional money, which is now quote unquote clean. It doesn't uh, absolve you from including the ill-gotten gains on your tax return. And so that's how something like money laundering, uh, even if it's done properly, uh, can give someone false uh, assurances that nothing's going to happen from a tax evasion perspective, because evasion is a tough thing, right? Um, there's a decent amount of time you can get for it's normally three to five years. And on your permanent record, it may be difficult for things in the future if you have an evasion or a fraud charge. If you're out of compliance and you want to get into compliance, which is normally how I always end these presentations, but something to keep in mind, you cannot run dirty money through the voluntary disclosure program in an attempt to clean it and get out of trouble. So the IRS is not going to be your launderer. Um, they've said it on various different occasions. So if you are out of compliance, if there's an international component especially, and it is because of some form of money laundering, then you may have to go an alternative route. Uh, at our firm here, what we specialize in is offshore disclosure, uh, things like the voluntary disclosure program if you're willful or just can't certify under penalty of perjury that you're non-willful, 
streamlined uh, domestic, streamlined offshore delinquency and reasonable cause. We have lots of free information available on our website, goldenlawyers.com. We have a couple of sub websites as well. You can always reach out and schedule a reduced fee initial consultation. Uh, again, my name is Sean Golding with Golding and Golding. Thank you for your time. Enjoy the rest of your day.